Risk glowlens explantation with complicated cataract and atherent pupillary membrane. This is a young gentleman who had a previous bilateral iris glow for high myopia. Unfortunately, he developed retinal detachment in the left eye, which was treated by vitrectomy and silicone oil. The oil was removed later and he ended up with white cataract. We did full assessment for him and B scan, which showed that the retina is attached in place and I listed him uh, for surgery. I started the surgery by planning a scleral tunnel uh, incision. I'm planning here to do two separate incision. Occasionally in these cases, you can use the same scleral tunnel incision for the cataract, but since I'm expecting to do extra maneuvers, I prefer to make two separate incisions. I planned a little bit posterior uh, scleral tunnel incision, about two to 2.5 millimeter uh, from the limbus. And after creating the incision, I made two paracentesis and then I make the initial opening to the anterior chamber. We start the surgery by planning to remove the uh, iris claw lens. I often find it easier to remove it with two instruments, one for, uh, micro forceps to grip the claw of the lens and then a second uh, instrument to disengage the claw from the pupil. The main thing here is to try to be atraumatic as possible. We'll repeat the same process for removing the second uh, claw. And once the lens is freed up from the pupil, we can increase the main incision and slightly rotate the lens along the axis of the main incision for easy removal. This lens is about uh, six millimeter and it's a hard lens After removing the lens, I suture the scleral tunnel incision with two vicral suture. Then moving to deal with the cataract, I made a clear corneal incision and tried to dissect this posterior synecia. I tried multiple times, but it didn't work. And I wasn't sure what's happening here. I just recalled that from slit lamp examination, there was an area where there was a little bit of a gap so I started dissecting the synecia from this uh, area and a bit by bit the synecia was completely cleared and then I noticed that there is a, a pupillary membrane. I cut that membrane with a micro scissor and once this membrane cut I injected a viscoelastic and now we can see the anterior capsule. This was followed by uh, placing a, a malugan ring to extend this small uh, fibrotic uh, pupil. After centering the malugan ring and injecting extra viscoelastic, I painted the uh, anterior capsule with uh, Vision Blue, and then I'll start the capsulorexis. I use a cystotome in that scenario, and when I tried to open the capsule, I found that there is a severe zonular weakness. I managed to make a small snip in the anterior capsule, but when I tried to hold it with uh, a capsulorexis forceps, I couldn't open it. I tried multiple times and then I moved to try a sharp uh, needle tip, then grasping it again with the uh, capsulorexis forceps. It's very thick and fibrotic and any trial to open it, the zonular complex is very weak. Then I tried with another sharper tip capsulorexis again. It didn't open easily. So I thought to use a needle tip again and again with the uh, forceps. Then I thought to use a micro scissors to make a cut through the anterior capsule. It's opened now. Then slowly extending the capsulorexis. The structure here is, is a bit different from a normal capsulorexis. We'll try to do like a many little uh, maneuver where you pull the edge of the capsulorexis towards the center. And once you do that, the CCC will extend on the other meridian and then gradually spreading that in a repeated many little maneuvers. Again, repeating it again and slowly a bit by bit extending it to complete a decent size capsulorexis about 5.5 millimeter. There was a small tag at the end, which I thought may be a good idea to remove with the scissor. 
Once the capsule is completely removed, I just explored it on the surface of the eye to make sure that the capsular axis uh, is complete. Then moving to remove the cataract, a little bit of hydro dissection. This is a young gentleman, so expect the cataract is quite uh, soft and it came out with almost phaco uh, aspiration. I prefer by manual IE in that uh, scenario. It often works better and more efficient. I noted that the capsule was really floppy and this is maybe because of the combined effect of previous vitrectomy and oil tamponade and the patient is already uh, highly myopic alongside the uh, extensive zonular weakness. Slowly removing these uh, fibers, it may take some time and it's a good idea to be patient. I'll try to in different areas just to slowly remove it and aspirate it. I have a polish setting with low vacuum in my uh, FACO machine, about 10 to 15 uh, millimeter mercury. And then gradually polishing this posterior capsule, you can try as much as you can. The main thing here is to try to avoid any BC tear since the eye is already vitrectomized and it's often easier you can do YAG later on. So once I felt that the visual axis uh, is cleared, I injected some viscoelastic to avoid any anterior chamber collapse. I decided to put a CTR. I often find the guided CTR insertion is less traumatic in that scenario. I did a further polish to the posterior capsule. In that situation, the capsule is a little bit stretched due to the CTR here. So I did further polishing with the viscoelastic uh, cannula tip till I clear the visual axis and then inserting uh, a single piece acleric uh, lens. Once the lens is in place, the malugan ring uh, is uh, removed in the usual uh, manner. And then we'll proceed with some uh, regation aspiration to clear any remaining uh, viscoelastic and any residual uh, lens uh, fibers. Then the wounds were hydrated and uh, then I closed the conjunctiva with a thin O vicral suture and intracameral antibiotics were injected and the surgery uh, was concluded. This is the one week post-op picture. The patient has 6-9 uh, vision with good visual uh, outcome and very pleased with the surgery. Thank you very much for watching.